into what safety feels like for you and just bringing to mind certain symbols of safety. I, I threw together this slide with some images of safety for me, some symbols. These don't have to be images. They could be sounds. They could be smells. They could be people. Safety symbols. So see what it's like to come up with five of your own safety symbols right now. And you can feel them, say them out loud, think about them, write them down, whatever works for you. Five safety symbols. Just give yourself time. And it can be an activity like picking shells at the beach, gardening, fixing a car, working on the computer, everything. It doesn't have to be spiritual. <laughs> it can be having drinks at a beautiful bar. <laughs> Any safety symbol. I mean, okay, maybe that one's a little toxic, but you know, if it's a really beautiful bar and you're having a great time with friends and you don't have a drinking problem, that could be a safety symbol for you. <laughs> And by the way, I'm really happy also, this is going to sound a little weird, but I'm happy to be your safety symbol as we're meditating. When I did a lot of work for um, the first time going into my, my physical space, my body space with, with my meditation guide and, and healer, um, I always knew Frank had, had like was kind of holding space for me. And when I had fear, it was a sense that like, oh, Frank is um, here and, and hit the space he creates is very safe. And once I asked Frank, I was like, is that right that I feel this way? And he was like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm really doing that. I mean, I'm just doing my thing. So if you're a healer or a coach or a meditation teacher, you're probably doing your thing, but being well grounded and present and able to be in your own body in a safe way that gives the the frequency you could say that the tone of that presence for your client and so we all do that for each other here and of course because I'm leading I am I'm extra aware that I'm doing this um and and that I'm hoping um that you know that so I'm just kind of saying it out loud as as a strong intention but we can also all set the intention for our time together to be very safe and connected and present and that we offer each other this this meditation that we co-create together and let's just begin with our breathing practice. Now you've had time to have your safety symbols. You know they're there and they can come to aid you, to support you, to friend you at any time during your practice. So now we're just going to breathe. And as we breathe, just noticing, noticing where your breath is at today. And, you know, it might be just kind of like, oh, as I inhale, there's a little, there's a little quality there I wasn't aware of. Or, um, wow, as I exhale, I kind of feel my rib cage. Or it might be, um, I'm stuffy. I'm a little stuffy today. So just noticing the breath. And I want to encourage you to keep eyes open if that feels good for you. Um, there is someone's audio on, so if you can just check if you think your audio might be on. And now bringing your attention down to your feet and your seat. 
feet and seat are very grounding and supportive. And just let yourself settle a little bit more into your seat, noticing how the earth is there, the ground under you. You don't have to be outside to have the ground under you supporting you. And if your eyes are open, just notice, notice your space, notice that it's safe. Okay. Let's see what it's like now to slow down the breath a little bit. So in your own way, depending on what the rhythm of your breath, just take it a little slower on the inhale. That's making the inhale a little longer. And let the, let the shoulders move, let the face be flexible, the hands move if it helps you. There might be a little twist or something. And as you exhale, let the exhale be very, very relaxing, long, as though that exhale is just stretching out. And as you breathe in and you breathe out, let the breath be felt in the whole body. Sometimes it helps us to breathe with the whole body by feeling our hands and our knees and our feet, maybe the hips, just kind of feeling that in and out breath as though it's just extending to these, these wide points in the body, the shoulders, the hands, the chest opens a bit. And there might be a sigh or a yawn. And that's perfect. There might be, like I said, a twist or, or a wiggling of the feet, the toes, the ankles, whatever needs to move is allowed to move. And your breath is this beautiful rhythm in you that helps to release energy, emotion, to nourish you. And sometimes it's even extra relaxing. You can try to kind of put your lips together as you exhale as though you were exhaling through a, a tube. Just try that, see how that feels. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through that tube. Might be a little wider, it might feel kind of like a funnel. Okay, and when you're ready, see what it's like to bring some words of calm to your body, words of comfort. You might want to put a hand on your heart, maybe a hand on your solar plexus or your legs or your belly, and just think of words that are comforting. And so you're just continuing to breathe, to feel, and offer your body words of comfort. You might need to say hello first to your body. And then as though the body is something that we are in a sense rediscovering right now, we can say something sweet like I like you or I care about you, I am you. And just notice the body's response to these words of kindness, comfort. I hear you. I feel you. And with this kind, friendly frequency. Let's just begin exploring our body and just noticing, noticing first if the body wishes to move at all or how it is moving internally or externally. 
internal movements might be very subtle. External movements might be bigger or small, like one little finger wiggling. But there's no right or wrong way. And with this friendly noticing, checking out what's it like if your hand is on your heart space, just to feel the warmth of the hand there. Or if your hand is on your leg, that connection between hand and leg. Give yourself time to feel. And just knowing there's not a particular way to do this. So whatever your way is of feeling into the body is, is very much perfect right now. Sometimes our attention goes to a certain place and just be there, letting the full experience of that place be with you. If there's tension, it can help to do a long calming exhale. And just imagine a releasing, a kind of down, dropping away of tension. You might invite angels or guides or those safety symbols to surround you, support you as you release any tension. And some tensions we're not able to release, and that's okay. We bring them our friendly, warm, comforting consideration and respect. Any spot in the body that needs to speak to us, you can just be there listening. And if anything is ever more than you'd like, you can open your eyes, look around, return to your breath, or use your safety symbols, all those tools we talked about. So you're going at your own pace, being with your sensations in the body. Letting your awareness go where it goes. This is open, flexible. I may mention a part of the body and you wish to go there or you don't. And that's okay. You go where you want to go. So let's just see what it's like to go into our right hand for a moment. Just saying hello to that right hand. If you want, you can turn the right hand so it's facing upward. So the palm is meeting the air. And see what it's like to just... Feel into that right hand, the fingers, the palm of the hand, just noticing, noticing and allowing that right hand, saying something nice to it, and then dropping any words in the noticing and just be that hand. This hand is you. So just be the hand. And when you're ready, going to the left hand. And if you wish, you can turn the right hand down so it's resting on your leg. And then opening the left hand, it might mean moving it so that the palm faces upward. And just be in that left hand. Say hello to it. Notice. Notice the movements in the hand, the temperature. Anything you wish to notice about the fingers or the palm, or the wrist. And when you're ready, drop the noticing and just imagine you are this hand and be the hand, nothing else. If something comes in, that's okay. 
but for a moment, you are just the hand. And when you're ready, you might want to turn the hand back down or leave it up. Feel free to move both hands, just moving the hands through space, through air, noticing the movement, and then letting the hands come to rest again, either on the ground or the body, wherever it feels right, letting them slowly find their way to you, to the rest of you. And let's just take a little time with our back body, starting with the back of the head. And let's try not giving too much interpretation to it, just being the back of the head, being the neck and shoulders. Bring in your breath as you'd like, let the body move. And just be in this connection with your back body, down your back, to your sides, to your seat, wherever you want to journey on the back body. And if anything feels surprising, just bring your reassuring, comforting words, your symbols of safety, your breath. The hands can also be beautiful messengers of safety and calm and comfort. And when you're ready, if you'd like, sensing your legs, just feeling into the legs, and it might help to let your hands kind of gently glide over the thighs, the knees, and just saying hello to these incredible legs that are your legs. Wow. Letting your attention go down all the way into the ankles and feet and toes the shins, the calves, the large muscles of your legs and hips. And just feeling that support of the legs, bringing your inner kindness, like a smile in the lower body. And then just allow a dropping away of words, or images and see what it's like just for a minute to sense only sensation in the lower body, just sensation. And it's okay if you go to somewhere else in your body, that's okay. Your body is very wise and you might find it's easy to sense in one area or difficult, and that's perfect today. So just noticing now where it's easy to sense. And spend time there just being, sensing. It's okay if you talk to yourself about what you sense. And it's okay if you sense without talking, without think, thought. It's all welcome. And just take a moment now to notice the whole body. What's it like to spread your attention and awareness through every cell in your body? 
It might start in the heart or the hips, the belly and spread out. It might have a quality of light, like an illumination feeling going through your body into even your face and mouth, even into the edges of your body and the core of your body. So just in your own way, be in the whole space of body. Just for 30 seconds, the whole body. And take some nice breath there. You can just imagine your breath it exhales into all of you. And as you inhale, it's all of you that inhales. Okay. Let yourself move a little if your body wishes to move. Allow any unwinding of the joints. It might be that the wrists want to move or the shoulders or the knees or the ankles, the fingers. The face might want to kind of scrunch up and then release. Just really allowing that. And when you're ready, we're going to just bring our hands together and, and hold our own hands, feeling that union, that connection between your two hands. And you might want to move the hands a little so there's like a crisscrossing going on. And then see what it's like to cross your ankles as you cross your hands and just feeling that connection. Kind of like an interesting, gentle, very gentle energy squeeze through the crossing. And then cross the other way, ankles and hands. Sometimes that just resets the two sides of our body and we wish to uncross. Now let's see what it's like to let our hands give us a gesture of opening, relaxation, and um, uh, like gathering, allowing, receiving. How do the hands show you a posture of receiving? And just see what it's like to allow that receiving of goodness, of kindness, to come through the hands, through the face or the top of the head or the heart or the back and let that receiving of goodness just because you are, no other reason, you get to receive goodness just because you are and let that receiving go through your whole system. It might feel like a sigh. It might feel like a light or just a letting go as you receive. And then we're going to give ourselves a hug. So sometimes, you know, however you like to hug yourself, sometimes people like to put one hand kind of under their underarm and then switch sides. It depends also on how flexible you are, what the hug is like for you, what feels right. It can be a smaller hug, kind of holding the arms, bigger hug, and switch sides. And then sometimes after the hug, we want to stretch a little. Let yourself stretch and unwind. And when you're ready, if your eyes were closed, just opening your eyes, coming back into our circle, our space. And I'm curious how that was for people. So I know it can take a little time to kind of come back. You might have some water or a journal.
There's a lot of, I'm doing a lot of scrolling here, but I see a hand up. Hi. Hi, Galia. How are you? I'm good. Hi, Magali. Hi, everyone. The first time, actually, I'm speaking. Oh, I'm so the, glad you're speaking here. <laughs> after the meditation, thank you for this yeah. opportunity. Uh, usually, I fall asleep very deeply during your meditations because uh -huh. uh, I've been for quite a while short of sleep or I break up during the night a few times. Mm -hmm. But today I'm fresh and I actually participated in the whole meditation. And I used to was a body worker, so I'm a holistic therapist. And I've been doing this for a number of years. And yeah. today doing this for me was very important because as if we were doing this body inside body energetically body work and spiritual body work as well mm -hmm. so for me it was very interesting when i read what the meditation is going to look like today i was very curious and i fully participated just maybe for a moment i lost i got lost yeah, <laughs> so yeah. i went into deep deep relaxation and then i came back uh I loved it. Oh, Any, I'm so glad. Every moment. And it is this to pay attention to where the tension is and to release. And it is releasing. So I, I felt this. But in general, when you welcome us back, I felt so fresh. Usually mm -hmm. it takes me time to come back and to yeah. recover now. Mm -hmm. Fresh. Yeah. So I'm full of um, life and energy so thank you so much oh I'm so glad to hear that and you know it it is very different doing this kind of practice versus the more creative mind um kind of journeys because it makes sense to me that it's easier to come back because you really haven't left right you've just gone more present um yeah and I think this is for those here who are coaches um, I think it's really very important to learn this skill to be, for some it's natural and for some it's really a skill we learn to be in our body. You know, we, we're all on different kind of, we all have different ways of relating with ourselves and the world. And some of us tend to get more expanded and a little bit more dissociative. And some of us tend to have a real easy time being really here now like like it's almost ludicrous this thought that like we're gonna say something to our body because we are our body but for others it's like wow no I'm actually never really in my body so just respecting that we're all relating to ourselves in these different ways um for me may, may, may yes I add yes something else Sure. I always, you know, I'm following you for years because I was trained by you and your husband uh, mm. for um, life coaching. Yeah. Uh, the what always amazed me that you have no wrinkles on your face whatsoever. <laughs> and when once it's just you zoom, that, it's just zoom. No, I have wrinkles. No, no, and you're always, always in balance so i admire the work you're doing the way how you look mm -hmm. i've been doing this for 15 years so i'm 60 years old but from very early age i have these wrinkles here and they are the emotional wrinkles on my forehead but to see this i have not seen such a face oh, <laughs> so you're so kind this is a blessing you're and very kind close. you're very kind oh. it's zoom <laughs> trust me it's zoom if you were close up to me you'd see the wrinkles <laughs> but i was surprised and that wrinkles are great right how do we also <laughs> love our wrinkles i think part of the body practices and it's also okay if we don't love our wrinkles and we do things to not have wrinkles that i'm i'm not in any way that's good too but i think part of this body practices are you know creating that bridge of friendship with the body because there's lots of like for example um you know I, I've told some of you this I sprained both ankles this summer 
So I had about a good month of pain in my ankles that I didn't really, I didn't really say it was pain. I kept telling people I saw for help that I wasn't in any pain, but when the pain disappeared, I realized, oh, I had been in pain. Um, I just didn't call it that. But my point, my point is that when there's injury or discomfort in the body, it, it is, um, I kind of lost my point why I was saying this, but I think we can understand that any of these sort of body focused practices bring us into better relationship, whether it's injury or illness or um, frustration with our body in some way, we all have a unique relationship with our own bodies. And it's very helpful to bring, to bring our, our kindness to that, to understand it and to at least want to be in a loving relationship with our body. I think that really has a helpful um, kind of resonance in our whole life. If we can be in, in a kind relationship wherever our body is at, whether that's pain, whether that's a discomfort, um, it's not working the way we had hoped. The older we get, the more our body can sometimes present not as our friend. And we have to rebuild that friendship again. It's very true. It's yeah. very true because <laughs> often we we actually reaching the point to burn out and abuse our bodies rather than to love and be connected. So yes. thank you once again. Yes, thank you. And Win, hi Win. Uh, this is my let me turn my camera on. This there is my second time doing this I somehow had followed your emails for years now and I I somehow said okay self-care when you're way too busy to do a simple meditation or buy a zoom self-care and I have a physical disability so it's interesting how my body receives meditation. Yes. And it's interesting how my body, my popular substances in my body receive meditation. I have energy workers work on me all the time. I am lucky to have two of them in my life one closer than the other to me but um it's interesting how and trust me i have tried meditation apps i've tried tom and it's very interesting how my body is receiving a group meditation via zoom yeah, I'm, I would love to learn more whenever you want to write to me and tell me more about how that is working out in you. I would love to know. I will. Yeah, I will. yeah. Okay. I'm glad you're here. I'm so glad you decided to come to the live group. And I, I do think it's a different quality when we're, when we're connected this way, all of us. Yeah. Okay, when thank you. Let me know if you just unmute if you have more to say. Okay. All right. Sit sit it sit sit it ka. I'm I no, I'm not saying your name right. Go ahead. And I hi, hi Magali. You did hi. say it right. Siddika. Yeah, thank hi. you so much for running this session. I have a question. So sure. I um I found meditation very helpful. I've been on and off practice practicing for a while I was working with a small group of people and some of them had <clears throat> well they all experienced domestic abuse and one um, a couple of them had other traumas as well yes and during the meditation two people almost were choking they said uh, they had so much phlegm mm -hmm. uh, coming and overwhelmed they couldn't breathe etc so since then I stopped I just felt it's not safe yes I'm just wondering if you have any advice as to what to do should that happen if I try again yes 
Um, so are you in presence with them physically? Or are you on Zoom? No, I was present with them physically. Present. Okay, great. It was a small group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to do more teachings this month. September is going to be body month. So I'm going to do more, but, but quick, what I would recommend if there's been, if, if there's, let's say active trauma healing going on, cause we all have trauma, but let's say like, yeah. like the group you're explaining. So, um, beginning by, um, just bringing attention and we can all do this by the way guys to what's in our room and does does the just noticing are there any dangers in your room um is there safety here are there shapes and colors you can identify this gives our mm -hmm. you know our nervous system the information we need to know that we are safe and then even looking mm -hmm. behind us just checking. There's no, there's no predators behind us. I do that checking behind me all the time to remind my nervous system during the day that I'm safe. We can oh, do more. Simple. Yeah. We can do more practices of just, um, uh, moving our hand along our, our arm saying, you know, we're giving the message of comfort of calm to our arms. The same with the other one, holding the hands together. So eyes open mm -hmm. and these kinds of practices um, will start to create safety and connection in the body. And then I would ask people, if you feel ready, just for one minute, see what it's like to, with your eyes open, just bring your attention to the sensation of the hands against each other or the sensation of the feet against the ground, they can move a little. And um, that, you know, that, so that would be a way to do the somatic meditation in a very um, conscious, um, awake state. Does that make sense? Do you think that might help? Them? Yeah. Yeah. I think it probably would, um, but I probably, avoid um saying closed eyes uh, yeah closed eyes and also um maybe i'm not going to use the word safety safe because okay. that's said it reminded them of the you know fight and flight mode in which they lived for years okay yeah, yeah. so i think okay that's a good point arms yeah. Yeah, the arms and you yeah. know connecting with the self. Yeah. And checking the environment. Is it is everything okay? Yeah. Say yeah. And thank the you. the other thing, thank you for sharing. This is so important. The other thing that I think is important when there's been abuse is that sometimes we blame ourselves quite naturally. This is just a like common thing that we shame or guilt ourselves for not having left earlier or for having had a fight response or a freeze response to the danger. Um, yeah. And so this meditation of inner friendliness and also just thinking of um, ways that we can say words that are comforting to ourselves that give us comfort and caring, it's, um, it's to let go of that shame, you could say, or to heal that shame that happens to all of us. Yeah. So that might be something you you talk with the group about. Yeah, yeah I'll do that. Thank yeah. you so okay. much. This Thank you. Helpful. Thank you for sharing. And Marbeka, hi. Hi, can you hear me? I can. How are you? Hi. I'm very well, thank you. Or oh, I think I am. Um, <laughs> hi, Michael. Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to uh, point out the um, the moment when Magali said that um, appreciate your right hand and then the left hand. Um, for quite a few weeks now, I have this discomfort from my right shoulder right down to the top of my hip on the okay. right side. Um, I, I know what it is. Um, because I've been working very, very hard in my job. 
um, it's in front of the computer. Mm -hmm. So I've been neglecting my need for mobility. And, you know, even though I do go outside, but it's not been regimented, if you like. So um, when you said to appreciate the right hand, left hand, I traveled to a place that I never thought I would. It was basically backstage. I don't know what the stage was about. I guess it's a bit like, you know, like The Voice or, you know, one of those American Got Talent or something. <laughs> and um, my right hand as a persona was on stage, was performing. Wow. And then my left hand is in the wings. And where I was, I felt physically, I was more on my left hand as, a, as the left hand as the supporter, the, the person in the wings, I'm watching the right hand. I, 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 I've, wow. I, to me, I just thought, what? I was asking myself, what's going on? Why, why am I here? <laughs> but that that's was fascinating. Really yeah, that seems like a very deep insight. What would you <laughs> like to learn more about that? If there was a question you could ask the left and the right, um, it's basically. Um, appreciating that yes and acknowledging that I am I, I'm right-handed anyway that I am in my life I am I'm working very hard I'm performing so much in terms of trying to get everything sorted I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a single mom so I'm like carrying the burden and doing everything making sure everything's right with my right hand yeah hence my right side but I shouldn't forget that I always have my left hand to support to keep me in balance um and uh it's it's never going to let me down so I, I think that's that's what I'm I'm learning well, that's okay. so beautiful wow thank you for sharing that <laughs> I feel like that's like something for all of us like a gift you gave us so thank you yeah You're and thank you for the meditation as a whole <laughs> absolutely okay I'm wondering if there's any um any questions or messages I missed in the chat? If I did, please, please repeat them or raise your hand. Um, and Moses, hello. How are you today? I think you're still muted. There you go. Okay, very good. Uh, thanks so much for the meditation. Uh, this, this summer, I tried uh, therapy and attempting to I uh, find the pain in my body, where the pain is, uh -huh. and wasn't successful at all. Uh, uh -huh. And some dollars later, but I, I was thinking that doing what we do on the meditation, I get so much stimulation, and I can identify my body so well, even the tingling and feeling of it. Uh, this is good, uh, but when I'm not with you or Mark in a safe place, uh, I don't engage to okay. do it for myself. So um, yeah. I just wanted to say it out loud. I appreciate that. Maybe it would be good for us to all sort of right now, those who are here, think about how to engage with that for a few minutes a day on one's own. So what comes to mind for you, Moses? What, what would you take from the practice today that you would use maybe in your day-to-day, -day, like maybe before you get out of bed in the morning? That, that's a good time because that's when I feel most fearful of the day. Uh -huh, and it takes uh -huh. a moment to, to get that out of the way. And usually it happens through receiving a text from my network of guys. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that's a good, good time. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And it could be just when you're lying in bed, for example, um, doing a quick body scan, like, like, how does my head feel? How does my back, my front body, my hands, you know, just wherever you want to go, I would make it very free. And just notice, is there anything that wants to move a little? And then, and then how to, how to bring that kind of welcoming, friendly attitude to the body. Maybe there's some words you say, 
like I have a little ritual, I'll tell you guys. It shows you that my morning routine is not one that people brag about online because I first one of the first things I do is make coffee. But while while my almond milk is warming up in the microwave and my espresso machine is revving up, I do just one quick stretch like that, like we're standing up and just hands together and reach to the sky and, and move. And it's only a minute long, <laughs> but it's part of my morning routine to connect with the body. So however we do that, really just even a minute of that connection can kind of set us up for more more connection during the morning with our body. And I think that's what we're going for, just more sensing, more connection. Because what can happen, I don't know if this happens to you, Moses, but like if I'm if I'm stationary, sometimes I'll just kind of forget about my body until it hurts. I don't know if that happens for you, but many of us might end up in sort of static positions where we're forgetting to sense into our body. Yes, for sure. Yeah. 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 And uh, what you mentioned about the short periods while doing something else, I uh, got that same message from someone else uh, and how they, they do it. And mm -hmm. it just is so simple while I'm doing the coffee, just do a little of, of what I need to do. Yeah. 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 And the more we pair a new habit, with something we already do, the easier it is. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. yeah it just makes so yeah. much sense. Uh, I'm glad to hear you say it yeah. uh, because that's the second time I've gotten it. Oh, I good. <laughs> oh, good. I like it when the universe gives us that, <laughs> that oh, echo. Yeah. All uh, right. Be well, Moses. So I, hope you, I hope you have a great day today. You too. Okay. So Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Yeah. Hello. How are you? I, I'm well. I literally, I don't know what happened. I, I fell fast asleep. So, and I only just like, oh my God, where am I? But then that's because <laughs> I, I think that's because I'm still jet lagged from just coming back from LA ah. in, a, in a dance competition. So I still think I'm like, I was like, whoa, what happened there? Unless your voice was so relaxing, it just zonked me out like a, a, me a meditation but like um, a hypnotherapy a hypnosis uh, so that's <laughs> well I hope you had a good nap it was a meditation yeah. nap you know <laughs> yeah oh uh, and I like uh, well, so I kind of like I don't know it was like my body was so relaxed <laughs> yeah yeah, well, as a dancer, it'll be interesting if you listen to this later. It's it's always interesting for me to hear, you know, different people's experience in their body who who relate to their body in a unique way, like being being a dancer or a swimmer or something else. Um, yeah, so it's a body meditation, Lisa. That's that was the theme, and um, <laughs> hopefully you can listen to it. Any other question or share? No. Okay. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to say, if any of you, I don't know if there was a message or I don't know why I'm thinking of this, but I am. If any of you find it really just feels right to meditate in your body, like the whole thing of being with your breath, although your breath is your body, of course, but, but some people try practices that are like, thought-based, like watching their thoughts or being with their breath or creative imagination practices, and they really don't feel right. And then they find that if they go into their body and they just spend time being with sensation, they kind of drop into deeper and deeper states of relaxation or kind of open awareness, different ways we can explain it. Um, deep concentration, but this sensing of the body is a very real, ancient, important tool or method for meditation. So there's a lot in, in um, you know, somatic embodiment practices and all these things that we 
kind of talk about from a trauma informed lens, all these different ways, but it's also, I just want to be clear. It's also a very traditional practice of the, the, um, the object of concentration being the body sensations. That is a traditional practice. And um, where I am not so traditional with it is I really um, invite people to move when needed or to move their hands or to talk to their body. So in, that's not the traditional part. The traditional part is being with that inner body sensations and letting that bring a focus and a spiritual path into, into awareness. Now, I, I'm actually, even though I have a history of, of trauma, like I had a quite traumatic childhood and a lot of stuff like that. And I did disassociate. So I did leave my body a lot when I started meditating kind of as a I don't know, I'd say seriously, like it became one of the most important things to me was my meditation. What I learned that even with that past experience, even with the tendency to kind of go out of my body, the body became actually the easiest, most natural object of meditation. So it's not always like it's, it's a funny kind of weird thing. Sometimes even if we have a past that led to having some fear around the body or injury or whatever it is, it still can be the thing that brings us closest to ourself in meditation. Um, so just, I wanted you to be aware of that because th this relationship with the body can change so radically. And, and please, please, if you love doing that practice, just do that. You know, the practice with the body can take you deeper and deeper and deeper, and then it can open up almost into like outer space, that depth of the body. So there's a lot of places to go and write to me if that's your, if that's your favorite, and I will point out some teachings and some directions that can be helpful because no one, I didn't tell anyone when that was happening to me. I didn't have a teacher that was talking about body-based practice. So I had to kind of find that out myself. And so if I can be a connection in some way to some of those practices, I'm so happy always to be that. All right, guys, be well. And um, I look forward to next week. We will have another meditation next Monday. Um, I was thinking of changing the time and all that, but I don't think I am. I'm just gonna stay Mondays at 10. Um, I think a lot of people, well, the people who are here, people who can come. So that's perfect. <laughs> All right. Talk soon. And I'll be sharing this on YouTube as well and sending you guys a link. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.